Overtime editor Ann Silvio talks with Scott Pelley. Scott, your story on 60 Minutes this week is about mental illness in children. Where did this story start for you? Well, after Newtown and the terrible events that occurred there, uh, many of us at 60 Minutes began to ask the questions, okay, how does this happen? One of the things that we discovered is that when parents have a disturbed child at home, it is very difficult for those parents to find health care for their children in this country. Seven-year-old female, zero seven female, coming from school. Basically, patients been having a temper tantrum since about eight o'clock this morning. The first place these kids tend to present themselves is the emergency room when they've had a complete breakdown and they are violent and a danger to themselves or others. Right. <laughs> I want to go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. When you arrived on the scene, was she out of control at all? Yes. We went to the Yale New Haven Hospital. They have 52 beds at the hospital for psychiatric patients. They're generally full all the time. I'll tell you what we got. How do they come into the emergency department? Uh, usually it's in an ambulance. Uh, police officers may be accompanying them. Uh, parents do bring them in. Um, sometimes teachers bring them in from school. Uh, but usually the scenario is, uh, you know, 911 is called. Have you ever been hospitalized psychiatrically? Yes. And why were you hospitalized? Um, overdose. Were you trying to kill yourself? Yes. When these kids come into the emergency department, there's literally no place for them to go. So they just get sent home? They get stabilized is what they call it. And so these parents tell us that it's just a revolving door through that emergency department, that they have to go back again and again and again. He was uh, discharged and on a um, Thursday and we were back on Sunday morning. Our producers on this segment, Michael Ray and Oriana Zill, have been working on this story for many, many months. And the really difficult part is to get anyone to come on to television to talk about it. Imagine being a parent, appearing on 60 Minutes to talk about the serious mental illness of your child. Very hard to do. This has always been our only option. Uh, the emergency room. The emergency room, yeah. I think we spoke to probably between 30 and 40 families. A large percentage of parents said no. Uh, I don't want anything to do with this and please don't film me. Oriana and I are both parents of young children. I mean, we all have kids who have freakouts. They want something, they yell, they scream. Temper tantrum. Temper tantrums. This is something that goes well beyond that. How is this different? I can tell you a story. Of, um, my son got mad at us for something. I can't even remember what it was. And I found him that night hanging out of our second story window by one hand because he was so angry he was going to kill himself. Mm -hmm. He was in fifth grade. It's the intensity and the severity of the symptoms. These are kids who are persistently and uh, severely violent, out of control, uh, you know, threatening to kill their teachers, punching kicking, biting, scratching, flipping desks in the classroom. We went to one home where literally the entire living room was filled with holes in the wall from the child punching the wall. And there was one that was a very large hole and we said, what happened there? And she said, the mother said, well, that's where my son threw his brother through the drywall. And this, and this is a story that we don't tell because it's shocking. We tell because it's common. It's all around us and we were surprised by that. Uh, a lot of people keep it in, they keep it quiet, there's shame attached. Everybody talks about the stigma attached with mental health and it's real. It's really real. What is the difference between being the mother of a child who has mental illness and the mother of a child who might have heart disease or cancer? Sympathy. Empathy. 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 Yeah. Empathy. Casseroles. 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 Casseroles? What do you mean? Somebody needs to share the casserole uh, story. I, 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 <laughs> My daughter, when she was 13, um, was hit by a car and uh, fortunately was fine except for a very bad broken leg. The church organized uh, a brigade of ca you know, casserole makers. The neighbors brought casseroles, friends, families, everybody. Six months before that, Christina had spent two months um, on a psychiatric ward and we had no casseroles. And, in, in, and I'm not blaming the church or the neighbors or anything. Because of the stigma, I mean, we didn't tell people. One woman 
had a violently mentally ill child at home and her neighbors had a lawyer send her a letter to, to remind her that it was her responsibility to seek health care for that child. It's that kind of difference. If so the instead child, of a casserole, you get a lawyer? Uh, you, you get a demand letter from a lawyer. Yeah. There's a fear, of course, not entirely unjustified, as we've seen, but there is a fear of uh, mentally ill people. And when you do feel like killing yourself, what kind of thoughts do you have? What resources do we have for parents with mentally ill children to make sure that that child has the opportunity <laughs> to be better and to not go off the deep end? After Newtown, after any of these school shootings, we always ask, why did this happen? How could this have happened? How did this crazy person get a gun? Reasonable people will disagree about gun control. But when you hear the story of these parents and the struggle they have with their children, I think most people would agree we can do a lot better job on the mental health care problem.